Nathan, check it out. Our friends over at Bean Trailers called and said, hey, we've got a Subaru Cross Trip Wilderness we'd like you to review and our new Beanstalk 2.0. So what are we doing today? Today, we're gonna do some light off-roading. We're gonna review this vehicle. We're gonna take it towing with the Bean. That's right, can't wait to bring you this video. Let's go hit it. Subaru does not work with TFL, so we don't have a ton of hands-on experience with newer models, but Nathan and I are both really excited to get our hands on the wilderness version of the Crosstrek because this is the off-roady trim with all these gold accents. Yeah, that's right, and these accents and all the cladding mean off-roading. Yeah, that's right. Now, Nathan, what does the Crosstrek wilderness compete with? Well, it goes directly against the Bronco Sport, and of course the Jeep Compass. Yeah, and we have a ton of off-road experience in those vehicles, so I'm really excited to see how the Subaru compares. But the Wilderness doesn't only give you some visual trim, it gives you about 0.6 inches of additional ground clearance for a total of a massive 9.3, and we also have underbody protection and tires. That's right, these are Yokohama Geolander ATs. I've actually used these before. They're quite aggressive off-road. Yeah, the gold trim continues up here on this integrated roof rack. And out back, we're gonna find our receiver. What does a cross check tow? This one can tow up to 3,500 pounds. Which is pretty good. And we're gonna find out what does that mean in the real world with Beanstalk 2.0. All right, Nathan, first time on a Moab trail in the cross track. What are your first impressions? Well, I think that you and I would agree that the first things that you need to do in order to make a crossover any vehicle more off-road worthy, tires, and height. Yeah. I mean, those are really important. That's exactly what Subaru did here. And they've been doing it for a while, but this one, nine inches over, nine inches of ground clearance, very good idea. Tires are great. So you're already off to a good start. I believe it has better ground clearance than both the Jeep and the Bronco, uh, Bronco Sport, I should say. It's performing quite well. Suspension is definitely probably dialed in more for road. And this is all secondary, right? Right, yeah, I mean, first and foremost, if you're designing an off-road focused crossover, you do have to realize that 99% of the time, it's life is going to be spent in parking lots and on the road. Exactly. So it is a little stiff, Yep. but it is doing a good job of clearing some of these rocks and moguls we're going over. That's exactly it. And they want the vehicle to be able to be driven home. But in addition, any automaker, this is Ford, this is Jeep, this is Subaru, if they're building a vehicle that's taller with more aggressive tires, they're losing MPG and they have to maintain good MPG. So there's that trade-off, how far do you go with it, right? And this vehicle is a really good example of where you can go with it and still maintain good economy. So the Wilderness Cross Trek starts at about $33,290, about $1,100 more than the Limited, and the interior design is meant to be very rugged and durable. So we have these almost wetsuit-like seats, which feel like they're gonna do a great job of repelling dirt. A very kind of plasticky dashboard, but once again, nice and durable. All-weather Subaru Wilderness mats. We've got a Qi wireless charger here, a nice chonky screen in here with all of your integrated features, and then leather wrap steering wheel with more of that gold trim. I do like the analog gauges quite a bit. It's got Subaru's eyesight system, so we have adaptive cruise control and a bunch of the safety gear. Overall, a pretty comfortable place. This one has power seats, heated seats, so it's quite well equipped. And Nathan, how is the rear seat room? So Tommy's uh, over six feet tall and he's back and I have plenty of leg room actually, surprisingly. I thought it would be smaller in here. I have decent headroom. If I were Roman, who's taller, uh, his hairpiece would definitely be rubbing against the top here. Uh, <laughs> but in my case, I just have enough space. Uh, actually, these seats aren't too bad. Back here, I have USB and USB-C plugs, but I do not have a rear air vent, something to keep in mind. But overall, it's actually a decent amount of space. And Nathan, for a company so driven on dog friendliness, the lack of rear air vents is quite surprising. It is indeed. So the back seat fits a Nathan quite nicely, but how about the trunk? <sighs> no, it doesn't quite fit me, but <laughs> it's still fairly large, but your dog probably would be a little uh, uncomfortable back here as well. But smaller dogs would be fine. Yeah, I mean, the hatch opening is fairly small for the big Bernese mountain dog folk out there. Also, the liftover is a little bit on the high side, considering how tall this thing is. All right, Nathan, we got just a little river crossing here. It's like we're in a Subaru commercial. There we go. Well, there's no dog in the back seat. Yeah, no skis on the roof. <laughs> yeah. No didn't, problem. I didn't care. Yeah. Now, Nathan, this does feel quite a bit more car-like than something like the Bronco Sport Badlands, wouldn't you say? Agree, 100%. But they did something, Tommy, I gotta tell you, I'm very happy about one thing, and I, I'm, th we're not doing a Subaru commercial, come on, we're the last people to do that, but they did something to make me extremely happy. 
What's that, Nathan? I have a place to put my shoulder or elbow on as we are driving that is padded. In other words, on the windowsill right here next to me, this is padded. Now, I know that sounds like, oh, what's the big deal about that? You'd be surprised how many cars just have a hard piece of plastic here. I like driving cars with the window open, and I like being able to hang my arm out there. And it's so nice to have a nice piece of padding right here. I really like that. Yeah, that is, that is quite nice. Now, let's talk about the powertrain, Ethan. 2.5 liter flat four mm -hmm. 182 horsepower 178 pound-feet of torque that's not a ton especially compared to some of the vehicles in his class that's right actually if you think about it you know that little Santa Cruz I drive actually puts out more torque than this yeah. but a slightly less horsepower and it's enough but it's just not a lot now we got our first little obstacle here and we're gonna see how the Subaru articulates so we're gonna lift up on the front right wheel just like that now, I'm watching while you're doing that, our driving statistics, which is a screen that shows what's going on, where the power is going. It looks really good graphically, but it's not really showing us much in terms of which wheels are losing traction. So, so that worked pretty well, Yeah. and that was in normal mode, but let's try that again. What we're doing is we're picking up opposite ends of the car uh -huh. and then forcing the traction control to engage. Um, and actually, that did work much better than I was anticipating, but let's try it again in the Dirt X mode. Ah, Dirt X. And we're going to see how that performs. Now, of course, famously, this car does have a continuously variable transmission. Uh -huh. And we're going to see how the torque delivery is. Sometimes it's hit and miss with CVTs. So we're going to take the hard line here. And tell me, according to Subaru, this has symmetrical all-wheel drive. Symmetrical! As opposed to non-symmetrical all-wheel drive. Definitely performed a little better. There's no wheel slip. Yeah. Like none or very, very little that I could detect. So actually quite a big difference by going into that X mode there. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. So Nathan, we do have this driving statistic page. What does this show us? Well, it is showing us, you know, our angle approach and everything else in that respect. Also showing where the power is going, but it's not a very good graphic in that respect. It's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, the power is going that way, kind of. But I'd, I'd like to know which tire is really slipping and what it's doing. And I'd, I'd like to know what the articulation is if you're going to show this. But the graphics look good. And this is not like a super challenging trail, but it's perfect for a crossover. Not really. <laughs> We've got kind of this cool little cross hill here. Yeah, this is going to challenge it. Over here a little bit more. There we go. And let's see how the articulation is and how the traction control system works. So taking it super slow, and then we're going to start lifting up wheels and tires. Yeah, so now we have both wheels off. Front, right, and left. There we go. And this is typically where the CVT starts to struggle. But actually, well, it's figured it out. We got a teeter totter here. And we're down. We're down. Down goes Fraser. So pretty good, actually. You know. Were you in the X mode? Yeah, that was X oh, mode. Okay, that good. was the dirt X mode. That's probably as far as you want to push a car like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got a little approach angle test here. See if we're going to use that little front skid plate at all. The nose does stick out a little bit. I will say that. Oh, pretty good. A lot of clearance in the rear. Yeah. Which is good. Hmm. Worked all right. Yeah. I mean, my only real criticism is the ride is very stiff. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we're running like 35 PSI in these tires. We could air it down, um, and that would definitely improve the ride by quite a bit. Yeah, but then you lose ground clearance. Then you do lose ground clearance. Yeah, in a crossover, you don't have a lot to lose. Exactly. And this one, like this. I think at nine inches or just over that, I think that's ideal for a little crossover. Yeah. Look at that. Pretty good for a little guy. Yeah. We've got the hill ascent control working. Not bad at all. Yeah. Did all right. So before we can get to the towing, we have to show you guys what we're about to tow. And this is something really cool. I'm here with Drew. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Good. So, Drew, you're with Bean Trailers. And talk me through what we're looking at here. So this is our brand new Beanstalk 2.0. Okay. So we had a lot of off-road trailers for a long time. Everything that we have starts in the high 20s. We have a lot of people asking us for something more affordable, but still high quality and off-road capable. So with this trailer, we pulled out the rear galley to save weight and cost. Okay. So we cut the weight down to this one starting at 1175. So we towed it out here with the Subaru Crosstrack. Really good for people that have smaller tow capacity vehicles. Um, it still has the same single piece fiberglass shell that we have on everything else. And starting price on this one's 15,999. Wow. So starting price under 16 grand for a single piece fiberglass shell, steel frame. It's got the Timberin 2000 HD independent suspension. This one that we're looking at here 
does have the four inch lift. Inside structurally is composite. So you don't have wood in the sidewalls or the floor or the structural parts of the trailer. Uh, we do use it in the cabinetry because it looks nice. Yeah, it's kind right. of high quality. We use a, a high quality Baltic birch. So walk me through um, um, some of the features on this model. So this one yeah. has the optional door on this side. It does, yeah. So standard, again, to keep things as light and low cost as possible. We, we make most things options on this trailer. So this side generally would just be a flat wall. Uh, you can upgrade it to a single large window like you can see over on our green trailer over here mm -hmm. Or you can upgrade to the second door and small turn window here So compared to some of the other beans I've I've had some experience with without the galley It really extends the length in here, right? It does it does it really opens that up in the back So normally your cabinetry is going to come out there Everything that we have stored underneath is where your rear kitchen would be So that's where your stove and your fridge would be for that rear access removing that allowed us to open up that entire area. So we have the big rear storage shelf. We have all of that storage underneath. Everything's running through that goal zero. So that's acting as your inverter, your USB chargers, your 110 outputs, all of that. And it's also the DC output that's running the fridge in the front, the lighting in the trailer, the fan, all of that. So it keeps it really simple, keeps it upgradable by the customer if they want to bump that up in the future. Yeah. And uh, walk me through what you've done to kind of keep the weather out. So is this unit insulated? How does that work? Uh, so it uses a uh, hex core air insulated um, composite wall. So I usually expect cold weather, 10 to 15 degrees warmer just with body heat. Mm. Um, but we have like Brigham, you had a uh, uh, heated blanket last night that he was running off his goal zero stayed cozy all night I just used my sleeping bag and it totally comfortable it was nice. probably I would guess mid 20s last night it got pretty chilly but Super it was cool. nice in here and you kind of mentioned it earlier Drew but this mm -hmm. unit sits really high off the ground yeah yeah so you're able to kind of tackle some pretty challenging terrain yeah so that green trailer with our our Bronco um, Brigham actually pulled that through poison spider <laughs> Crazy. The entire trail with that trailer and the Bronco that we use for work. You have the side table that locks into your jerry can mounts. Nice. So you can run this modular. It's got the little cutouts so you can run sink and cutting board or you can run two cutting boards, two sinks. Oh geez. One tap for off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then you have two options for this. So if you look under the door, you actually have a slide in storage under here oh, super that we cool. made weather tight. And then we have a under shelf mounted package. So you can see the secondary table there, which you can do one or the other, or you can do both. And you can actually utilize the slots on the side of this table to create a nice little like L-shaped island. So you can actually run that table off of this table. Nice. So one of the cool things about these teardrops is you have a really big area for yeah. storage in the front. Yeah, so with this, uh, we made a kind of a lighter weight tray than what we had on our other trailers. It's still nice and structural, so if you don't have things on here, you can stand up top to get to your roof rack. Uh, we do put solar and 12 volt plugs on the front there. So we have really liked this Iceco 55. It's their outdoor rated fridge. It's dual zone, so you can run fridge and freezer. And again, that's just running off of that goal zero. So. And is it all custom configurable to the client's needs? Yeah, yeah. So pretty much everything we build is built from the ground up for the customer. Uh, you get to order custom order all your options and everything with that. We do have, we tend to try to have a couple inventory models on hand. Usually they sell out pretty quick. So if, uh, if we do have them, they're not, they're not always available, but yeah, most things are custom built. And how many colors? 18 different standard color options and then about 90 upgraded color options. Okay. So something for everybody. So you got an option. So it starts at about 16. Mm -hmm. This one behind us as equipped, where do you think this one's sitting? I'm thinking this one's probably sitting in like the 24 range. Uh, average out the door, recently sales I've seen 21 to 22, um, but we've sold them as cheap as 17. And then you can all, all kinds of stuff to them. Sweet, well Drew, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate it. Now we're gonna go tow it. All right, Nathan, first tow. Now that we made it through that giant mud pole, we're going out in the trail in the cross trek. And the nice thing about this bean stock, 14 to 1500 pounds as equipped. So fairly lightweight little unit, which means that um, it doesn't have that big of an impact on the driving dynamics of a normal crossover. No, you're going to feel it when you're speeding onto the freeway. You're going to feel it with the gas pump, I think. Those are going to be noticeable. But this is aerodynamic, not a ton of drag. 
I mean, it doesn't have the giant, giant tires on it. So I think it's a pretty good compromise. Yeah, right. And um, look, 182 <coughs> horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque in this Crosstrek CVT. Mm. It's not a ton of power, but if you had to accelerate and speed up, it's okay. I mean, you're not going to pass someone on a two-lane road with much of a hurry with the CVT, but it'll do its job, you know? So I know for a fact, uh, years ago when we did talk to uh, Subaru people, that they've always been geared towards towing. They've always wanted their cars to be better towing vehicles than the equivalent competition. And I think they're staying to that. I think this thing tows pretty good for a small car. Yeah, I think you're right, Nathan. Um, handling is pretty good as well. Um, you know, one thing you do have to note is if you uh, want trailer brakes this cross track, you're gonna have to have a wireless or integrated brake controller. Yes. Um, and then of course you're gonna need the receiver back there but yeah I mean this is really the big advantage of the beans over a bunch of their competitors is a this one has the four inches of ground clearance of the off-road tires mm -hmm. so when you're going over rougher roads like this you're not worried about punctures you're not worried about grounding out and we also have the independent suspension on this bean so we've got plenty of clearance yeah, um, the underside is all flat too, so it's uh, you know fairly easy to slide it over something if you really had to. Yeah, and if you really want to go crazy, you can even get it with rock rails, mm -hmm. right? Um, but B, it's just so small and lightweight and maneuverable that you don't need something like a full-size truck or a Defender or you know a, a Bronco to tow this. You can do it with typically any vehicle is going to be just fine. So yeah, pretty much your average crossover shouldn't have a problem pulling this. Yeah. Ah, we can get through that. That'll be fine. Shouldn't be a problem. Have a good day. Nathan, the side-by-side -side guy, not so sure we're going to make it through the water crossing Well, here. not only is he from Texas, but he's a Marine. So if he says so, then I guess we're done. Yeah. Okay, go for it. All right, Nathan, we got an audience with these dirt bikers. Yep. Going to build up a little bow wave in the Subaru. Oh, a little bumpier than we were expecting, I think, Nathan. Yeah, I would agree. And it's good. Pulled it through. Touchdown. Woo, we got one more little uh, soggy bit here. Kind of rocky at the bottom of that. That's exactly, you can hear it. And it's clinking around, and I think that's deceptive. That's actually uh, the tow hitch. Making yeah. All that noise, not rocks. And that's one of the things. Wow. About, one of the things about towing with the unibody vehicle, right, is that you get a lot of those kind of clunks and vibrations mm -hmm. into the vehicle. That's why body on frames are sometimes a little little, little quieter to tow with. Yeah, I would agree. And uh, you know, if you're serious about towing, then get a truck. So overall, guys, the Crosstrek really performed very well, both off-road in our little test and towing the Bean. And Nathan, what are your final thoughts? One interesting thing about towing the Bean, normally I tell people that they really should have special mirrors on their vehicles if they didn't come equipped with towing mirrors. But this thing is narrow enough to where it wasn't that big of a deal. A lot of these trailers stick out really, really wide and it makes it very difficult for you to see around them. So that's a big plus for the trailer. As for towing with this vehicle, yeah, as long as you're not going over 2,000 pounds, I think it works quite well. Yeah, it really works well. It's perfectly suited for this unit. If you want to tow off-road, you can buy yourself a Bronco. Beanstalk 2.0 is one of the most versatile units out there, from on-road to cars to massive off-roaders. you got a lot of options on what you can do with them. And a big thank you to Bean for sponsoring this video. Check the link in the description below if you want to learn more, or head over to beantrailer.com. We'll see you next time. So while I'm doing a little bit of solo driving in the Subaru, a couple of little things. First of all, for extra points, can you name three songs that mention Subaru in them? They are considered rock songs, all three of them to a certain degree. I'm just curious to whether or not you're able to do that. Second of all, um, just very important point. I used to own a Subaru. I actually had a 99 Forester, and it was really good, and my wife beat the daylights out of it and it still came back for more but it had a manual transmission and that's something that this does not have which is kind of a shame